Okay, a very short video on how to uh, test the individual cores the easy way on uh, z 790 Kimpin and I believe this works for the Z690 board as well. So if you have, let's say, a very good 1300K or KF or the KS and you want to like figure out which of the cores are the best for like SuperPi, 32M or some very old 3D like 3D Mark 01, 03, 05 and so on, you need to select the CPU P cores to per core function in the BIOS, in the CPU part, disable hyperthreading, disable the add-on cores, so set it to legacy mode and then do zero, and just your like normal voltage table. I use 1.65V core minus 75% droop, 800 to 1000 kilohertz on the PWM and core PLL at 1.1 and uh, LN2 mode enabled or disabled depending on which mode your CPU usually prefers. Some like disabled, some like enabled. But yeah, so when you get into uh, Windows, I recommend you boot in at some safe speed like 6.5 on the uh, cores, like 5.7 on the cache. This is usually what I do, just normal voltage table like this. Hit the per core function in the uh, Elite X1 and I usually use SuperPi 1M for quick testing. You don't actually even need to uh, uh, select the core you wish to use with Affinity. It will always run the test on the fastest possible core. So uh, for example over here, if we select like... Uh, so if we select... So keep it first at 6.5. Let's look over here in performance in the logical cores, which of the cores does it use. So it actually varies between the CPU 5 and last, so it kind of... It's all over the place, so 5.21. And now if we select the uh, third core to 7, just make sure the voltages stay all right and everything. And now, if we try to run 1M, this is full pot temperature of course, we should have max out over here. So CPU2, which is the third core, it's at 100% and we have an improvement of like is like 0.7 seconds so you don't need to select it by affinity so this is actually much faster way to bin your cores individually than by uh, selecting them one by one in the BIOS because then you always have to reboot like with hard reset so you have to go back to the cold boot back temperature and so on so you actually end up wasting a lot a lot of LN2 that way because now if we just crash the CPU this way, like if we set this to like 7.9, usually every core will do 7.9. The uh, Once you go to like 80, 80, 81, then it starts to get harder and the cores start like dropping. But now, if we crash, we can just reset and it usually is just fine. So you don't have to go back to the cold pull back temperature and we uh, save a lot more LN2 by doing it this way. Usually, what I recommend is that if you hang or crash, press the reset button very quickly, like as soon as you can, because sometimes it might go to the, uh, it might go to in an error state when it tries to reboot on its own and the CPU red colored LED light lights on constantly and then it has to uh, reset with, uh, I mean, it has to reset the hard way. So it has to shut down and uh, do the whole uh, uh, like training, well not training, but it has to do the uh, normal post process once again and you have to go back to the uh, cold pool park temperature. So, I already checked a few of these cores, so now I'll set this back to like 60 and I will test the uh, fifth core. So I'll uh, do this with you guys. Of course the voltage is very easy for this kind of like workload. So this is 7.9 now on the core number 5, 4.356 and now Let's see if 80 crashes. It might fail. Oh, it passed, so 4.287. And then 8.1. I'm sure this will fail. Might crash already on the desktop. I think it's close. Yeah, it's close, it's close. Okay, so that will pass, definitely that will pass. 
if we raised the voltage because it was so close. Very good question that would it run uh, 32 amps stable at 8.1 but it would run at least like 80 like 8 gigahertz for sure so uh, this is very good way to uh, bin these calls individually so I'll just go back to 7 and then we can uh, open up the 1M once again and, and just move on to the uh, next call so now I will just go to uh, 7 uh, 9 this is the second last call like so and it failed already so now what we do we set this back to 7 8 it could be that one of the last cores on this CPU are very bad so now I'll try to run it again at 7 8 if it passes then that already failed so interesting as you can see already failed 7 9 so we know the limit of that one as well and now we s oh actually that was the third last call sorry so because they are numbered a little bit different way sometimes zero is the core number one and sometimes it's the core number one or the or p equal one is the core number one so seven nine done then eight I think some of these CPUs might have a very strong individual call, like the one Asus used for the 9 GHz validation. Like usually I've had the best uh, CPUs only doing like 8.2 or so, so 8.8 .8 on LN2 and 9 on Helium is just amazing. It is ridiculous result if you ask me. Okay, so this crashed. But okay, so that's pretty much it. So definitely use these tips to your advantage. If you have the Z790 Dark Kimpin or the Z690 Dark Kimpin and you want to max out your very precious 1300K CPU or the 1300KS, you can easily do it with these steps. So uh, it's very easy to actually test these cores individually. And I already showed some uh, like multi-core benchmarking uh, tips on, my, on one of my previous videos, but you already saw the voltage table once again so it's actually pretty simple the only voltage that can actually affect the uh, uh, cold bug is the input voltage and it doesn't scale like linearly if you have a cold bug at like uh, minus 180 and you try like 1.8 1.9 even 2.2 volts it's very possible the uh, temperature doesn't move at all so it's still at minus uh, 180 even at 2.2 versus 1.8 volts on the input but when you suddenly just keep pushing that voltage so if you set it to like 2.4, you might see like suddenly that, hey, it can actually run at minus 186, but it cold bugged, it cold bugged again at uh, minus 186. Then you just push it again to 2.5 and it might be stable at full pot temperatures, like 2.2, like 2.55 or 2.6. The highest value I ever used on that voltage is 2.6. So that's probably the only hard part about these CPUs. These CPUs are very easy to max out and just run on LN2 like all day, all night. But yeah, so if you like to see this very short Z790 Tark Kimpin LN2 uh, individual core binning guide video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.